Hey everyone, welcome to Pega Hut. I'm Srikant, working as a lead Pega developer based out of Sydney, Australia. And you are in the right place if you want to learn Pega concepts. Hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you are the first to know if I upload anything new. And if you like the video, hit the like button and share it with your friends. So today what we are going to discuss about the autocomplete control that we can use that in section. So uh, I'm going to explain in uh, detail on how to use this control. I'm going to explain the sources for this uh, autocomplete and also I've, um, I've taken a use case wherein um, I would like to uh, search for an operator ID to assign a task uh, for a specific uh, uh, case and then um, uh, the moment I do search then it will try to pull in all the uh, operator that I have in the system and based on the search criteria that I type in. So this is what the use case I'm going to take. So without doing any further delay, let's get into it. All right, to start with what I have done is I've created a case um, um, as test and um, now it is uh, sitting in my learn hyphen pega hut learning hyphen work hyphen test and I've obviously created, so if I go to the case type, uh, what I have done is I've just created uh, two um, stages where you don't need to do these two stages just one stage is fine because all we need is section now this stage uh, this shape is connected to this section and now i'm going to show over here now to uh, know more about autocomplete so what we need to do is first we need to bring this autocomplete uh, and drag it to the section right so you're gonna get it in the picker section now in autocomplete what i'm going to do is so uh, in the test class i have got a uh, property called id so I'm going to use the ID um, uh, to store the uh, employee ID or operator ID. Okay? Now I've done the ID. Now as um, um, you, you see this autocomplete, so uh, what does autocomplete means? Means the moment you type in something, it should automatically fetch the detail uh, uh, by going behind the scene. Now uh, when I say uh, it should automatically fetch the detail behind the scene, that means obviously the source for this detail will be somewhere sitting in the backend, right? Now how would we pull the source? If you would have seen any drop down or anything, you'll always have the source, right? So here also in autocomplete, we'll have uh, four different varieties of source. The first one is as defined on the property. Now, what does it mean by as defined on the property? That means if you open a property here, once it opens, so here, right, in the property, how you got a table uh, type, right? If I choose a local list and then if I add all the values, then this property, uh, so what will happen if I use that uh, um, as defined on the property, that means all the value that define you define in the property will be fetched, uh, will be coming here. Um, similarly, if you go for database, that means a database will be used. So if I choose database, a database will be used here and the database should pull up all your detail and based on that, you will do the filtering uh, uh, criteria. Similarly, the third option is clipboard page. That means you have all the results stored in a clipboard page. You can, uh, you know, use over here. And the fourth option is report definition, which is our uh, very popular uh, option. So basically, you know, what we do is most likely for autocomplete, there are two methods we go, a uh, report definition or a database, depending on the nature of autocomplete. Let's say if um, it's, it's uh, you know, so every time you use a report definition, what will happen is, it will do a database call, try to fetch all the record and show you on the screen. And if you use a uh, database, that means it will load only once and it will always trying to get the details from the clipboard page. Let's say if you know the data are not going to change frequently, that means obviously best option is go for a database. But if you know that um, uh, the uh, you know backend data will change frequently uh, as in when you're trying and you always wanted to keep up to date uh, uh, when you do the search, that means you should go, go for report definition because if you go for report definition, it will do a fresh call and try to fetch all the data. Now for our example also, I would like to go for a report definition. Now what we are going to do is we are going to find an operator, right? Now here for the sake of uh, 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 this session, wherein I'm going to explain you about uh, autocomplete, so I'm not focusing on report definition. So uh, we have some OTP report which I'm going to use. Now as the um, uh, entire uh, requirement is to populate the list of operator, right? So if everybody knows, like if anybody knows that the operators are sitting in the data hyphen, uh, data hyphen admin hyphen operator hyphen ID. So if you know that operator details will be in this particular class. So all the operator that you create, if you, if I click on all the operator that I create, right, 
will be part of this class. So there are some OTP report which I can make use of it as part of my session. So to go, go which OTP uh, report, you can always uh, open this class and then go to the report. After that, go to the report definition and you will see all this OTP report that we have. Now for our uh, purpose, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, use the uh, PX fetch all reporter uh, uh, operator ID. Okay. So now this fetch all operator ID, what is going to do is it will. Uh, so if I just run, right, if I do action and run for this specific report, I'll just show you what it does. So basically it is going to give me the list of operator ID that I have in my system, right? Now, if I create one in the backend, automatically it will uh, also get me that one. So that's what it does, right? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, copy this, uh, this one, uh, this name, and then in the autocomplete section, in the uh, resource side, first it asks for applies to. So applies to class would be data hyphen admin hyphen operator hyphen ID. So if I just try to select the one and then the moment you choose this class, that means all the report definition over here will be populating. So if I click on the down arrow, you would see all the report definition that is part of this uh, particular class will populate. Now here what I um, want, I want this uh, PX fetch all report operator ID. Now, the main thing that you need to understand, right? So the moment I click on this fetch uh, operator ID, you would find a lot of options over here. Now, I'll quickly explain uh, these options. So basically what happened is here, uh, data source property. So if you want to know what is a data source property, all you need to do is just do a dot. Now, if, if you realize that the moment I did dot, I, you could see py user identifier, right? Now, did you remember where did you see this property? you would have seen this property inside this particular uh, report definition. So that means in the report definition, this is my output, right? Now this is the output which will be used here uh, in the data source property. If you uh, click on the down arrow, automatically it will come. Now if I choose this one, right? Here you got multiple options. Now first option is you got show. What does it mean? Means when you search, let's say for example, uh, I've got this operator ID NLP. If I choose NLP, if I if I type in NLP, that means show means uh, PY user identifier will be shown. So whatever operator ID matches with that particular NLP will be shown. So that is uh, what show means. Now here there is a tiny configuration field which will tell you whether you want alignment left, right, or width, or all these things. You know what whatever that model dialog kind of things will open you can you know define the weight size everything for that but yeah uh, for this session we are not worried about that now here there is something called set value now what does it mean by is the moment you search something and you select it, when you select right automatically what, what will happen is that particular value see um, set value property so that so basically this value is going to set into this associated property so that's right. So basically you are getting it from the report definition. This field you are getting it from report definition and you are setting this uh, into the associate property. Now in my case, the associated property is ID. So that means whatever you select uh, from the uh, list of value, it is going to uh, set it over here. Now, when I say use for search, right? This particular field, uh, here you can see associated property means ID. Now when I run that um, uh, section, and I'll type in something that means this whatever value that I'm going to use that will be part of my selection. Now uh, I hope you got I'll, I'll come to you know this section a little later. Now let's uh, click on submit and see how it works first to start with so that you can get an idea and then we can take it from there. Now uh, let me go ahead and just do an action and run. Now what we did again we created a uh, or, or we put a auto complete we selected the id as a property and by using that associated property we are going to do a search and then whatever we are selecting it is going to be part of my id now here let's say if i type in i start typing n that means what it will do is basically you could see all the list of uh, uh, detail coming right so every detail that you see you would see n is there right so what it does in the background uh, what it does is it goes over here and then it try to fetch all the de details from this so basically the moment you type in it goes and execute this report and then what it does is it try to um, you know uh, uh, show you all the result based on this uh, uh, search which you are doing so so basically it does the filter criteria okay on the on the go. so this is what do now if I go and like if L so you see NLP operator uh, 
came. Now, if I do Pega, so all the things that I have got for Pega uh, will come. If I do XYZ, so all the things that I have got for XYZ would come. Now, the moment I select any of the operator, that means this ID property will have the value. Now, how would I know if I do a create, I mean, just uh, to uh, store, right? If I do do a create, it will go to the next step. And if I open the clipboard, now that ID property should be sitting on the PY workspace. So if I go to PY workspace, and if you see this ID, you would see whatever I've chosen will be assigned to that ID property. So this is what exactly uh, it tells over here. It tells that I want this property to be assigned to associated property. Now, let's say, for example, you might have a scenario wherein uh, a property will have um, uh, you know different name right for example if i go to this operator id uh, here in nlp operator id let's say i have uh, the full name i'm going to put xyz okay and i'll do save okay and here i'll choose another uh, operator id for example uh, test uh, at the rate xyz here also i'll go and i'll say uh, let's say full name I'll say XYZ okay here also I'll put XYZ and I'll save it okay so now uh, NLP operator uh, has got a full name XYZ and this guy also has got a full name XYZ now what I'll do is uh, uh, if I go over here now here what I'm going to do is now in this property in this uh, report definition I've just got one fit I will go and do a private edit over here and I will also add PY full, uh, full name okay so the moment I would sorry uh, py uh, I forgot the level. So what I do is I'll come live. I'll take the live UI py username. So I'll, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and use the py username in the uh, operator. Sorry, in the report definition. Now here I've done the py username, which is full name. Now if I save it and that means intern, uh, behind the scene what I did is I have actually created another column for my um, report definition. Now if you see, now if I run the report then all the uh, uh, full name for the operator is also coming in the report wherein you see this text XYZ has got XYZ and this also got XYZ. Now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and uh, in this section I'll go and I'll create an additional field. Now if I go to my test uh, test class right so I'll see if there is a property that I can make use of uh, for the uh, for the timing so if I go to the data model and property so uh, let's say I've got uh, last name for the for the timing I'll just use this uh, last name instead of creating another one so here what I'll do is I'll choose py username here I'll say show and I'll say set value now for set value, what I'll do is I'll say py, uh, sorry, uh, last name, okay, just for the day, timing. Here, I would not use them for use for search, okay, I'll just leave that as is. Now I'll do a save. Now here in the same section, I'll come here and I'll try to create, or probably I'll create another case just to show you guys. Now once it create, now what I'll do is I'll type XYZ. Now if you see, the moment I type XYZ, what you found, you found all the XYZ that is there in the uh, user identifier. If you remember the um, uh, uh, report definition, the first section is user identifier, the second section is username. If you remember the section that we have used, the first row we have done PY user identifier, which is associated property, and then PY username, and both of them we told show. So that's the reason when I choose something XYZ, then what it does is basically it try to find out all the uh, user identifier that has got XYZ in there because in here I have told only use this for search now if I use this for search right now if I do submit and save you see it will be a little different so to do that I will do first action and refresh to make sure that it uh, takes the latest change now once I do I will say go now if I do XYZ that means it will not only try to go and find in the username but also to go and try to find in the full name now, if I do XYZ, can you see that now NLP model operator is also coming up because and you see there is a highlight also, right? XYZ in the bold uh, letter, right? So that, that's what this use for search does the job. So whenever you want something to be searched, right, then you can always do use for search. So what will happen is the superset will come by, based on the report definition and then Pega internally going to do the search based on your requirement. 
so basically it takes that user um, xyz it will try to find in all the um, uh, xyz uh, um, all the all the character that has got all the all the string that has got xyz in the user identifier and also the py username okay now i hope you understand now here if you want to set the value so similarly the set value as as i have described before what will happen is the moment you choose something py username is going to come over here and set in the last thing okay now coming back to so if you realize that the moment i put one letter right the moment i put x or y or something one letter it is able to search everything but here if i don't want if i have a requirement that i need to only display uh, after i enter two letter or three digits so the moment i put two so what will happen is the moment i save and then i'll go here and do another quick action and refresh uh, and then go so now if i just put x right it won't search anything the moment i put y then it will go and search because we have told them to search only for two digits similarly you know how you can see there are like five result over here if there is a requirement wherein uh, let's say you have done the sorting everything in the report definition if there is a requirement only show the first three result or four result or two result then during that time you can use this max result display so if i put max result display as 3 now what will happen is it will go it will only give you the three uh, result instead of the whole list which you had which you had seen just before so if i go x y what will happen see earlier if you remember i told you the count was 5 now it is just 3 so these are the all the things that you can do potentially with this auto complete now i hope you understand the concept of auto complete and also understand how to implement that in real time please do the hands on while you watching the video and that will give you more confidence while you are waiting for my next video you can click on the link shown on the screen to watch cascading drop down or section ui control series and please do not forget to subscribe my channel if you haven't done already